Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, welcome to Through the Bible with Joe McGee. We're going from Genesis to Revelation in chronological order. We're in the book of Judges today. It's a great book, lots of great stories. They've made a lot of TV programs and movies out of this one book. And so today we're picking up in chapter 16, Judges chapter 16. It's a story about Samson carrying away the gates. Uh, Gaza had big gates on the city, and Samson's going to go tear them off, and he's going to take them out in the country. And so people say, well, that's got, well, you got to find out the before and after about the story. So that's what we're going to do today. So Judges chapter 16, uh, verse 1, one day Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza and spent the night there with a prostitute. Word soon spread. Samson's there. So the men of Gaza gathered together and waited all night at the town gates. They kept quiet during the night, saying to themselves, when the light of morning comes, we're going to kill Samson. But Samson stayed in bed only until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the town, including the two posts, lifted them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders, and carried them all the way to the top of the hill across from Hebron. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, Entice Samson. Get him to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overcome and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you a thousand and one hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what would it take to tie you up securely? Samson replied, well, if I was tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I would become as weak as anybody else. So the Philistine readers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings, and she tied Samson up with them. Then she had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of the house. She cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings like a piece of thread and uh, and his strength was not weakened at all. Verse 10, afterward, Delilah said to him, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, well, if I were tied up with some brand new ropes that have never been used, I'd be as weak as anybody else. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. The men were hiding in the inner room as before. Again, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. Then Delilah said, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? Samson replied, well, we're to weave the seven braids of my hair together, a fabric on a loom, and then tighten them up on the loom shuttle. I'll become as weak as anybody else. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into a fabric, and then she tied it with a with a uh, loom shuttle, and again she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to catch you. But Samson woke up, pulled back the broom shuttle, yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. Then the lot of pouted. How can you tell me? How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day, till he was sick to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. I would become as weak as anyone. Delilah realized she had finally, and he had finally told her the truth. So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me the secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands, Delilah lulled Samson to sleep, and with her head in her lap, then she called the men to shave off the seven locks of his hair. And this way, Samson began, uh, uh, brought him down, and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines are here to catch you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do before. I'll shake myself free. But he did not realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him. And they gouged his eyes out and took him to Gaza, 
where he was bound with a bronze chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. But before long, his hair began to grow back. Now, you got to just take this real slow. Uh, she's got him three times. Finally, she wore him down. You know, as a Christian, you got to think about this. Don't get tired. Do not get weary in well-doing. She wore him down. He finally confessed, and she he ought to know. This woman doesn't love you. She's lied to you three times. She's brought the enemy on you three times. This woman doesn't care about you. But sometimes men can kind of be stupid about stuff like this. So they came in, and so he's got the locks cut off. He lost his strength. They took him, bound him up with bronze chains, gouged his eyes out so he couldn't see, and he's forced to grind grain. Now, what this is, this is a, a, the grain grinder. It's, it's a circle. They used to tie a donkey to it. You'd pull this big stone wheel around in a circle, around in a circle. And they'd throw the throw the grain on the big stone, and they would grind it into flour, and they could make bread out of it. So he's the, he's the donkey. They've got him tied up with these big bronze chains. He goes around and around all day long. He can't see. And he just, I don't know what he was thinking, but, but before long, he says his hair began to grow back. Then finally, the Philistine rulers held a great festival and offering sacrifices and praising to their God, Dagon. They said, our God has given us victory over our enemy, Samson. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, our God has delivered our enemy to us. The one who killed so many is now in our power. Half drunk by now, the people demanded, bring Samson out so he could amuse us. So he's brought out of the prison to amuse them. They had him stand between two pillars supporting the roof. Samson said to the young servant who was leading him by hand, place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. I want to rest against them. Now the temple was completely filled with people. All the Philistine rulers were there. There were about 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching Samson amuse them. And then Samson prayed to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, remember me again. O God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson placed his hands against the two pillars that held up the temple. Pushing against him with both hands, he prayed, let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people that he had during his entire lifetime. Later, his brothers and his relatives went down to get his body. They took him back home, and they buried him between Joe and Estol, where his father Manoah was buried. And Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. So there was victory in the end. Sad ending, but there was victory in the end. And he realized he kind of came to himself like, okay, I've been messed up. I've been a fool. I've listened to the wrong people. And so he doesn't have any eyesight, and he's grinding around his grain in a circle all day long. And and they think, well, we've got him, and they're throwing a party, big party. We got him, we got him, we got him. Well, they didn't have him because he prayed one more time. You know, I tell people all the time, the Bible says the righteous fall seven times a day, but they get back up. We're not a perfect people. We're falling down and getting back up people. But we know how to repent. We know how to forgive. We know how to get back up. The righteous fall seven times a day, but they get back up. Don't ever let your past hold you down. Whatever you've done, whatever you've said, we've all done dumb stuff. We've all sinned. We've all made mistakes. But God's mercy is new every morning. Sun comes up every day. What is it? It's a new day. And God's mercy is brand new every day. What's mercy? Stuff you don't deserve. You've not earned it, but God will give it. Blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus was coming down the street. He'd heard the stories about him. He's been blind from birth, but he kept hearing people talk. He's a beggar on the side of the road. What's all that noise, he asked one day, that healing Jews coming down the road? Really? And so all of a sudden, when he got close, he began to yell out, Mercy, son of David, have mercy. So what he asked for, he didn't ask for eyeballs. He didn't ask for healing. He asked for mercy because he's, he might be blind, but he's heard all the stories. God is a merciful God. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it, but God will give it. You know, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy and help in time of need. God loves everybody. God wants to help everybody. It's not something we earn. We don't get brownie points. God will give it freely. Come boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy and help in time of need. Mercy, we need. I, I've not earned it. I don't deserve it, but you'll give it, God. Just like you did blind Bartimaeus. 
Jesus stopped and said, what can I do for you, blind man? And the blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And he got two brand new eyeballs that day. It was an incredible story. God loves everybody and he wants to help. You just have to ask him. Jesus said eight times in the New Testament, you have not because you ask not. Ask that your joy might be made full. Great thought to end the day. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. it has got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.